welcome to Studio Talks. I'm James Swift. I'm Josh McNaughton and our guest today is... Me, John Bostock. <laughs> hey John, you okay? I'm fine, thank you. How are you doing within the lockdown? Uh, yeah, it's okay. I was I was kind of lucky because I was I was still in work. My business is still regarded as critical, so I've still been able to go to work. But now I'm at home, working from home, so I'm not that vitally important anymore. So this week I've been working from home, which is completely weird mm. and strange. But yeah, the commute to work is hell. Mm. <laughs> I go from my bedroom to the living room. It's like you know. It's murder it. But it's it's a uh, yeah, it's interesting. It's an interesting been an interesting week. Interesting few mm. weeks. Uh, I think uh, everyone you ever talk to thinks is is missing just seeing people, I think. Yeah, that's that's just definitely it, isn't it? Is, is, is the main one, isn't it? There's just yeah that interaction that you took for granted is gone now and and suddenly, you know, we're we're having to um talk to people on like this. It's nice, it was it's nice just to talk to people who I've not spoken to in ages. Exactly, because because you've not spoken to them, you're like you are like craving that to see through exactly. your faces. So that all that uncomfortableness goes out the window, you're just like, Oh, I've not seen you for you know, for ten days and <laughs> Yeah, know, exactly. That, that goes out the window, so it's all right. So, yeah. Yeah, I think I think missing people, um, being in the same place and just taking things we, we took everything for granted, haven't we, for the last mm whatever and something like this comes along and suddenly you appreciate all those things that have been taken away from you now. I can't wait for the first pint in a pub after lockdown. It's, it's gonna yeah. be amazing. All those things, isn't it? It's all those things that you just just simply just walking out the door and not even thinking about it and just going somewhere. Mm. Now now you know it's like going to the shops is like you've got to plan it. It's like a military operation now. Yeah exactly. <laughs> Right, I, I know what I need, I know what i got to go, I hope they've got them. <laughs> There's a mm. plan in case they haven't got that, I can get that. Um, oh, it's, it's, yeah, it's so stressful now. Make sure yeah. you're two metres apart from anything that moves. It's, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> so with that in mind, do you have any suggestions for anyone who has help with um, lockdown? Any like suggestions to do? I, I would, uh, the things that I've done is... I've made sure I at least do one thing a day. Have a goal each day. Say, right, I'm going to do that. Mm. And it could be anything. It could be, I'm going to watch that film. I'm going to listen to that podcast. I'm going to uh, listen to that album I've not listened to before. It could be, uh, I mean, I made, I made a custard the other day. You know, oh, and, nice. and they were really nice. I was really, really proud of myself and I've made, I made them. And mm. it could be Think simple, you know. I've got to clean the fridge out today. That's the goal today. Mm. I've got to read that book. What, whatever it is, I would just give yourself something to aim for every day. I, I, it doesn't have to be massive, a massive no. thing. It be a little thing. And even if you don't do it, it doesn't matter. You've got, you know, you've got plenty of time, haven't we? You exactly. Know? Yeah. Exactly. So I would just give yourself a little goal each day, and I would also what I've been tending to do is at least ring somebody or speak to somebody at yeah. least once a day to have yeah. that communication with a friend or a family or uh, you know I've, so i would say ring someone up have contact with someone at least once a day with friend or relative have that com have a conversation it, it does make you feel better i rung um keith up yesterday so we had a we had a conversation for mm. half an hour it just it just, it just it just gives you something to do and gives you that interaction with people. Yeah. So, yeah. Do something, have a goal each day and talk to someone and just try and occupy your time as best you can. So, in regards to the studio, when yeah. would you like to talk about when you start going and what you do at the studio? So, first off, what, what, when did you start going to the studio? Right, my first uh, experience in the studio was I was fundraising for the Scouts. My son was in the Scouts. Still is in this car, and um, he was going to Norway. So we we were trying to do come up with ideas of um, fundraising, and one of them was a battle of the bands. So that. This was this was kind of what we had to do. So we um, we were looking for venues mm. to host it, and uh, I just was looking on a website, come up against the studio, thought that looks interesting, contacted. The studio um, and it was Louise who replied and said yeah yeah we can do that 
Um, I'm even not even sure whether I came along to have a look at it. It was just like, yeah, this will do. Mm. And um, and we organised Battle of the Bands, and that's the first time I went to the studio. Mm. Um, and it was such a great place, and everyone was friendly, and we had a good night, and um, we raised a few bob, and that was my first kind of interaction with it. And then I just turned up one day, I think it was a Sunday afternoon, and I think it was the Rock and Roll Bowl, was it Rock and Bowl? Yeah, Rock and Bowl. Rock and Bowl, yeah. Mm. Sunday afternoon, I just turned up and uh, was watching people. I'm not sure whether you might have performed, James, I'm not sure. I know I did a couple of them, yeah. Um, you, might have, you might have done it. Um, yeah. And I, I just I just went back and then I went, kept coming along and then next minute I was helping out and I'm kind of in part of the furniture now, I think. Yeah, so, definitely. definitely. So yeah. I've, I've done quite a few things there. Um, so I've performed on Authentic Acoustic, performed, I think probably the, the, the major thing I did was metronomes. Yeah, that was a big thing, wasn't it? That was well, probably the first thing. Yeah, which which mm. I really just started to do acting then, so it was all brand new to me. It was a really good experience. Uh, Strange, isn't it that metronomes is? It, uh, I find metronomes to be quite a um, a big thing to most people who go. You know, it's it's one of the it's one of the things that you hear a lot of people say that is the bigger thing that happened the metronomes. Yeah, it was. It was a really good good project. It was a good project. Mm. And because um, it was all local music, yeah, local artists, you got everybody performed in the band, wasn't it? That was all the studio. It wasn't just um, anybody and anyone. It was just people who went to the studio regularly. We all created a band. I was trying to act, I think. I think trying to act. From <laughs> That's the kind of thing I can say about myself, about my performance. I was trying to act. <laughs> no, no, it was it was good. It was good. You did a good job. Um, I think I think that's I can't remember who it was, but someone said that what's what's amazing about I think it was Jane actually that she said that the best thing about it is everyone seems to be in, doing a little bit of something but doing the best at the same time. Yeah, it was, mm. it was a good, it was a really good experience. Um, um, I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed it, even though the night on the night, it's nights. Well, it was quite hot, wasn't it? And and um, before. It was we had like a heat wave. It was hot. Mm. My character wore a suit, mm. so it was the hottest night of the year, and I was in a suit. Mm. And, <laughs> and I had to when I got home, I got in the shower because I was I was like hot. It was that it was really really roasting hot. Yeah, you know, that's how I remember. It. <laughs> And dancing with bin bags, of course, as well. Oh yeah, that was that's. There's a few moments that you kind of have to rub your eyes and go, "Is this real? Is this really happening?" Because it's that was one of them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's where. I think that's where only at the studio came from, isn't it? One of those. Only at the studio. Yeah, yeah. Dancing with bags probably was the birth of that saying, I think. Yeah. So, John, would you like to play a song for us? Go on then, I'll, I'll play a song. I wrote this the other night, actually, so it's, yeah. um, I did put it up on social media. Um, somebody suggested a song that was by a, a guy called Taj Mahal, who sung a song called Queen Bee. It was mm. like really happy, it was a really happy song, and I thought, yeah. oh, that's, that's really kind of uplifting. And then I was just thinking the other night, I was just lying, but what, do I, what am I going to do? Funny enough, when all this is over, what 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 is it that I'm gonna do? And um, and it's just like the simple things mm. in life that we like, like we don't really think about. So that yeah. they're all the things that I want to do. And before I know it, I, I kind of wrote this song called "When the Sun Shines." So um, so I perform and I perform on a ukulele as well, which makes it a little bit brighter, I suppose. Than yeah, acoustic guitar. So uh, it's my bad kind of chords on a ukulele. I'm not, I'm not great. I'm not great on the guitar. I'm even worse on a ukulele. But there you go. So this is called when the sun shines. And it goes like this. <laughs> Splash in the sea when 
It was a really nice, it's a nice positive song though. Very cheery, like. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I think um, kind of, um, it's kind of like a philosophy song, rather than like a sort of like a sort of positive happy song. I think it's really, I think it's really well so suited for for ukulele, definitely. Yeah, yeah. So, I tried it on a guitar and I tried it on ukulele, definitely on a ukulele. Yeah. It gives it that, it takes it up that extra notch of brightness, doesn't it? So. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just kind of simple words and just easy, just the simple things that you mm. like to do. And when all this is over, well, you know, you can do that. And I think it's in, uh, quite relatable as well because I think everyone at some point has went, when when we're allowed out, this is yeah. this, these are what I'm going to do. These things. Yeah, it's, it's kind of when the sun shines, but it's it, that's kind of not to be taken literally just because it's mm. done it. It's kind of the release of getting back to normal life, and it'll, feel, it'll be regardless of what the weather's doing. It's just um, it'll feel like the sun shining anyway. Yeah. Because you'll be out and about. So, so that was that was the idea about it. <laughs> mm. So, in regards to songwriting, how how do you personally write songs? Because everyone seems to have their own different um, technique. By writing. Yeah. I think. Um, for me personally, either songs come very quickly or laboriously slow. Um, mm. I, I, I don't think that there is a way of writing songs. I, I tend to, th this song came very quickly and I deliberately kept the words very simple and, and relatable and it's not it's nothing sophisticated at all about them, them lyrics. So I think that's why it came so easily and so quickly. I wrote that in 10 minutes. Mm. I literally wrote that in 10 minutes. I had this tune in my head and, oh, and then I just kept it dead simple. Mm. Uh, what did that we just like to do? Especially, I almost made it childlike. In, like, yeah. Because I used to like doing when I was um, a kid, like skimming stones across the stream and digging in the sand on the beach and uh, splashing in the sea and stuff like that. Um, 
you know, so I, I almost, almost made it childlike in that sense. So that's why it became easy to write, I suppose. Yeah. Anything else that I've ever written has taken an age. <laughs> yeah. I um, think I tend to rewrite and rewrite and rewrite. And, mm. Mm. I think that's within the nature of it, isn't it? I mean, the best songs I've ever wrote, I've, in my opinion, I've done in about five to ten minutes. Like, it's just been a... Yeah, you, you know don't know where it comes from and it just happens. Mm. And, yeah. And you take them moments. I, I mean, a lot of songs that I've wrote, the, the, the bulk of the song has been there almost straight away. Mm. And then it's all the, the other bits and then you start changing things and messing about. But the, the, the crux of it is always there straight yeah. away, I think. Yeah then it's it's what you do to make it better and then you say oh i don't like that line mm. and start laughing about and that's what takes a long time in, in, yeah the, the actual bulk of the song i think comes almost instant, instantaneously you don't know where it comes from mm. you, you know you know when you're when you're kind of messing about and then you hit on something straight away yeah. it's almost I've got it, you know, and that's that's when you then it sparks something in your imagination. Off you go. Yeah, yeah. trying to find that moment is like it. How often does it happen? It does. It happens very rarely. But that's what you're looking for right? every time you kind of pick a guitar up and start faffing about with words. And most yeah. of the time, I don't come up with anything easily, yeah. easily forgettable and easily gone. But so every now and then you you come up with a line a line it's usually a line or yeah. a phrasing yeah. with a, a line you think and then it, it, it goes from there it expands mm. from there but I wouldn't say I've got a technique or I've got a way of writing songs um, I think trial and error is probably the best way to describe it yeah definitely it. definitely um, so in, in regard to writing, you also write poetry. I do write poetry, yeah. I just relate to that, to songwriting, because mm. I think I started writing poems before I started writing songs. Mm. And when, when, you write poet, when you write poetry, you've got to, every word has got to mean something. Mm. Every word has got, it's, it's, got to, it's got to be good. And it, yeah. it's because yeah. poetry tends to be sh short and, and you don't want it to go on forever. And, and so, so every word has, has got to be, it's got to hit the mark. So, um, so that helps you with songwriting, I think. Yeah. Because you can get rid of stuff. I think it's very good to get rid of stuff when you're songwriting. You say, I don't need to say that. I can just say that in one word or two words. Yeah. I don't need to say that then. And it becomes I feel a bit like, more. I feel like with, with poetry, you can be mo you don't have to be subtle, if that makes sense, but with songwriting, you can be like, oh well, I can kind of disguise that for something else. But with poetry, you can you can say what you think. If that makes sense, you can do. But I, I like like I say, I think every word has got a has got to hit the mark. Mm. You can't waffle. You know, you can't afford to waffle in poetry because every 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 single line on every sing, of every poem has got a has got to say something. Yeah, I think in songs you can get away with a couple of lines and. It's, Mm. It doesn't it's it's more of a lead into another line if you know what I mean. But mm. um, yeah, so I've got I've got a poem ready anyway. Oh, awesome! It's awesome. called uh, Portal. Lead me into landscapes new, away from tempest seas, a shelter from self-reflection. Cast the doubts into the dirt, trample underfoot. Rise from this sleep of spells. Embrace the sweet, fresh dawn. Step through the looking glass. From the darkness to the light once more. There you go. It's a very short, sweet poem. That oh, nice. That was lovely. Thank you. Um, that, was, um, that was written for um, an artist who's doing an exhibition. And she just she stood there with a mirror in some woods. And she said mm. it was a it's a portal she said she regarded it as a portal so and she wanted me to write poems to go alongside it so that was the poem i wrote called hmm. portal to go along to this image of this picture that she's got so that's where oh, that's that came from. it was like 
going from one part of a life into another part, like, you know, getting rid of one part of your life and moving on to the next and a new phase in your life. It's kind of so when you, uh, so when you write a poem, do you have a thought in mind what you're going to write it about? No, no, that was different because she asked me to do it. Yeah. yeah. So I, I was kind of asking her, what, the, what does the picture mean to you? And get, you know, get information off her and then take, taking that away and writing it in my own kind of way. Mm. Yeah, it was kind of different for me because normally I just write a poem with no set agenda, or whatever. I just write what I feel that moment. Mm. Yeah, I think if you just sat down and said, "Right, I'm going to write a poem about fish today," you just wouldn't do it. Mm. Or you're going to write a poem about sometimes. Sometimes I, if I, if I don't take it so serious, I can write about whatever is in the news or something, you know. Yeah. I, I wrote one um, called Social Distancing, but it's a very visual poem, so it's useless on here. <laughs> <laughs> because I wrote the poem, and one of, one of the great poets I love is, is a guy called uh, Bill Bilston. Who's, mm. Brian Bilston, sorry, not Bill. Brian Bilston, who's really, really good. And his poems are very visual poems um, and kind of he inspired me to write social distances in this way and basically the poem visually starts to come apart so, it's right, like, okay. oh, so it starts off together and then as the social distancing poem arrived the, the words get separated so the two meters are, well they're not literally two meters apart <laughs> the idea is that you know the two meters apart so kind of that's really clear Oh, wow. That's very good. That I like, I like the sound of that. And, and Brian Bilson does a lot of poems like that. He does like um, he he'll, he'll do a poem on autumn. Mm. And all, all the all the letters will look like leaves and all scattered across. And it's just it's just brilliant. How it, oh, that's wow. Like, that's really cool. He, he's got um, two books out called "I Caught the Last Bus Home" is his first one. Mm. This is um, and the second one is I can't remember the name. It's a diary, diary of a somebody. It's called the thing, diary of a somebody. And it's like he wrote a poem every day for three hundred and sixty-five days. So, hmm. so it goes through life. It's really that's really good as well. Oh, that sounds really good. So yeah, that sounds really good. He's, he, yeah, he's a, he's a really good poet. He really hmm. is funny, funny guy. I follow him on Twitter. Follow him on Twitter. He's really good. What's his second name? Sorry. Bilston. Bilston. He, oh, right. Okay. I, I was... S T O N. He, he, his most famous poem is, is I think, called Migrants. That's right. his most famous poem. And if you read it, it's re I don't want to give it away because yeah, you've yeah. got to read it. And then oh, definitely. You, you've got to read it again, but you read it in a different way. Okay. So, and it's got a totally okay. different connotation to it. It's really clever. Really, really clever. Look at oh, it. Awesome. It's really brilliant. It's called Migrants. Migrants. Right. Oh, excellent. Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. Thank you for, for joining us today. If, if people want to find your, uh, like, find your stuff, how would people find it? Ooh, prob probably best place is, is Twitter. Follow me on Twitter um, at jpbostock69. That's my Twitter. Um, I'm on Instagram as well, and that's something similar, but it's got an underscore on it, and I can't okay. remember where, but you're probably fine. Um, okay. Probably Twitter is my best place, is, is where I usually put most of my stuff. So it's probably the best place okay. Cheers, John. That's great. Okay. Cheers. Thanks. I'll see Bye. you soon. Bye. See you later. See ya. See ya. Bye. Bye.